it going. Spring is upon us. And you know what that means. I gotta start building fences for rich people again. Damn it. It happened so fast. So I got a project coming up this Monday where I need to do a lot of Shosugi Ban wood burning. Or I think it's also called Yakisugi. I better look that up. So, as it turns out, the distinction between the two is far more convoluted and in-depth than I am qualified to go into. Here's a pretty good video about this if you're interested, but basically what I'm talking about here is a method of finishing wood that involves charring the surface based off of the ancient Japanese technique. So, um, five seconds in, already issuing a correction. We're off to a great start. Well, let's go for a little drive. I'll just show you the fence. So this is the type of fence that we're going to be building. It's steel frame, reclaimed pickets, and then these boards at the top are the yakisugi boards. And this time, we're doing more than four piddly panels. We're doing the whole damn fence. That's a lot of wood burning. These are a lot of freaking work. So we're going to try and uh, bring this ancient wood burning technique into the modern era. So I think the obvious place to start on this is going to be the Bernie Bernie part. So. We're going back to a simpler time in YouTube and we're gonna take a play out of the King of Randoms book. So here we have plumbing part and some uh, pretty poorly plasma cut parts. I really pushed the edges on that thing and also uh, the plasma cutter is half taken apart because I'm putting damn electromagnets on it. Spoiler alert. Side note, if any of you know how to send either floats or doubles of the Axis information on Linux CNC over a serial port through USB to an Arduino, hit me up. <laughs> I've been banging my head against the keyboard for like four days and I still haven't gotten it. Anyway, parts. First, we can take the cap and pop a little hole in it. Roughly centered. Then I'm going to go ahead and tap it to M6 threads. And this gets a welding tip installed. And this will act as the gas nozzle outlet thing. Then we can go ahead and install that cap onto a half inch nipple, like so. First, we put this little shroud thingy on there. And I'm just gonna line it up with the back of the threads. So that gets centered up and welded to this uber galvanized thing. Close your lung holes. Then we can whack this little piece on there. Then we're going to capture it on there with this uh, lazy man snap ring. It doesn't snap at all, it just gets welded. So now we can control the airflow into there by moving this little piece. Alrighty, it's all put together and hooked up to a propane tank now. Let's give it a whack. Front. Oh shit. Try not to breathe all that propane. I think it would benefit from the barrel being a little bit shorter. I don't think that there's enough airflow to push it through this long barrel, but otherwise, I'm cool with it. Now, we need to hook this up to a chamber that we can pass a 2x8 through. So, I've got this little strap here. And I think what I'm going to do is bend this into kind of a circle and then squish it until a 2x8 and fit through. I want to circle so that we can actually create kind of a like vortex swirling around in there so maybe we'll be able to burn the entire piece with one torch but we'll see. Not terrible for a machine that can't do a full circle. I got got. That's good enough for me, man. I sure do wish I had longer clamps. That is a nice circle. That's pretty dang close to the shape that I was envisioning having at all. Maybe squash it a little bit more. I'll take it. If I squish it anymore, we're gonna make some corners here. So we've got our little uh, chamber thing here. Now, we need to attach our torch in a way that the gas will swirl around this thing. So kind of like at an angle like that. 
Look, it's kind of cute. It's like a little, little bug. <laughs> went ahead and moved it to the side and as you can see sorry you can't really hear anything over the sound of the torch as you can see I got it spinning around a little bit more but trying to burn wood with that it was uneven and localized on the one side so I decided we need the power of teamwork we're gonna need two torches that's fine that's fine so now we've got a bit of a two burner setup they're built exactly the same as the others, except rather than using a bell reducer, I just use a two inch pipe. Cause you, you saw how the old one would go out randomly. I think it was losing oxygen through that. I'm hoping that it wasn't relying on some sort of venturi effect. So let's give her. Yeah! It's totally working. We just need a better way to feed the wood in. I got a bunch of these little wheel thingies from Harbor Freight. Now I'm gonna stick them along the bottom of this. Beautiful. So we've got our in feed and out feed table. To get them nice and even with each other. That way we can figure out where we're gonna put this thing. Well, that's just about ready to go. Look, and we have these nice little uh, lighting holes. that. Woo! That is too much smoke for indoors. Yeah, I'm gonna let that clear out for a second before I come back in here. But hey, totally worked. We'll see what the other side looks like. I think that we're done with the Bernie phase. Now we gotta figure out the brushy phase. So after getting the wood nice and charred, the next step to getting this finish is to wire brush it. Because we have to pass it through the furnace thing here so dang slow, I think wire brushing it is gonna completely ruin it. I think it's gonna brush all the char off. So I'm thinking rather than a wire brush, some kind of stiff-ish broom might be the way to go. So and I'm trying to just brush this in one direction to better simulate uh, spinning on a shaft or, you know, some easy way to automate it. Oh, that looks pretty good. It's always nice when the cheap thing works better than the expensive one. So, I guess now let's just figure out a way to automate this. To make our little brushers, I went and I made these little pieces using the world's sketchiest router table to cut that little thing in there. These will be stuck around the shaft and then we can fasten our brush to them. I'm gonna glue this together. I'm gonna use five minute epoxy for the metal to wood and just regular wood glue for the wood to wood. So, epoxy's mixed, clock's ticking. And I'm just gonna pop a couple screws inside of those holes that I drilled. And that's more just to clamp everything together while, while it sets up. That is professional. Right, and then once that sets up, I'm gonna actually pin it to the shaft in a couple places too. But for now, we wait. So, we got our little uh, broom things ready to go. Now, we just need a way to mount them to the machine. In comes these ridiculously thick plates. My options were uh, 12 gauge or 3 8 <laughs> Yeah, they're a little beefy, but hey, at least we know they're not gonna bend. Let's go install these on the machine. Good morning. It's freaking cold. I don't wanna be out here. Where were we? We can install our motor on here. Oh, if only these holes were big enough. Good morning, neighborhood this this way all right i'm not gonna fully install it because i have a feeling we're gonna have to pull it off to get everything else on 
we just got to figure out the size of our brush. I think we can cut it right here pretty safely. That's how much shaft we have to work with. <laughs> Not ideal. So in order to adapt that shaft to this coupler thing, I made this spacer on the lathe. That just fits inside of there, or at least it's supposed to, and should fit on the end of here. Oh, once again, it's supposed to. Just like that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole through here and we're just gonna pin it on with something. Not sure what happened to the footage here, but it's in 1080p and it sounds like a jet engine. Luckily, it's all pretty self-explanatory. I installed the shaft coupler onto the motor. The other side of the brush thingy gets a bearing and then the bottom brush thingy just gets a bearing on both sides. Then I went ahead and printed a couple gears on the plasma cutter and look at them. They're beautiful. Then I painstakingly welded those gears mesh together between the two brushes with, with nothing but a, a square and a dream. But man, they ended up meshing pretty dang good. Oh my God. It's perfect. I thought I was going to regret having such big teeth on those gears, but hey, no problem. Burn the wood and then test it. How's it look? I can't see. Oh, yeah. Dude. That's actually perfect. Hell yeah. That worked beautifully. Check it out, guys. I got a jumpsuit. I'm trying to be a jumpsuit guy. I don't quite know if I'm there yet. One thing I've learned about jumpsuit life is um, you better do your business first thing in the morning because this thing is not easy in an emergency. Anyway, that works perfectly. So now we just gotta figure out how to feed the thing through and I've kind of been sitting here staring at it for a while. The nicer option would be a conveyor belt of sorts and then it could stay nice and contained. But the problem with that is pulling it through the brushes here is going to cause issues and it's also going to prevent the brushes from actually brushing the wood. So we need something that will not interfere with that. And the only thing that I can think is just have a winch pull it all the way through. The problem with the winch is it means we have to have at least eight feet on the outfeed side in order to pull the board all the way through, which um, sucks, but I kind of think it's the best option. So, I'm gonna throw together another outfeed table. Then we can figure out how this winch is gonna get installed. The winch I'm gonna use is this little cheapy Harbor Freight winch. And that, I'm just gonna weld it in place right here. Since there's such a large gap, I'm gonna install these couple pieces of angle iron as a catch of sorts in case the wood wanders off in one direction. Now, I guess we just gotta automate it. Ta-da! That's basically that. Through a bit of a tango of turning valves and flipping on motors, we can get this thing done, but that's still pretty manual. So, we're gonna make an Arduino do all that. I don't know why everything I do winds up using an Arduino lately, but um, it is what it is. So, let's install some limit switches and solenoid valves and then make this thing go. I didn't really plan to do, well, uh, any of this. So we're just using what I got. I've got two types of limit switches. This side, gets this nice heavy duty boy. This side, gets this little piece of trash. It's fine. I went ahead and threw a solenoid valve on with the gas. This is more for shutting it off than turning it on because I don't have an igniter. I don't really want, trust an Arduino with the responsibility of turning this on. So whenever I start it, I'll just have to light it manually. Once the wood is out of there, then it'll shut off. And there's one more little bonus. And on this, we can mount this solenoid valve with a little fork in it. And this, we can attach to the air compressor and blow all the ash off. That's about it for all the components on this thing. Now I'm going to take a second and link them all together, get this thing running, and then it's testy time. All right, it's all basically ready to go. Um, we, we had a bit of surprise snow, so I had to take a bit of a hiatus from this 
project. But things running now. Uh, let me kind of show you what's going on. Got my uh, signature spaghetti going on in there. Very nice. Before we start the program, we have this button, which we just push to retract the winch. That way we can get the wood right where we want it. And then when we start the program, it's all based on timing. So winch runs and the brush runs and then we wait. Start, it'll keep this valve open for the gas. So this will keep running until this switch is no longer active. And then to end the program, once this switch is hit and then released, that's how the program ends. That way when the board is pulled all the way through, it'll stop. It all works. We just got to adjust the timings for the correct amount of burnage. So let's get this thing hooked up. The wind rendered most of this footage unusable. So this is a very voiceover heavy video. It gave it its first test and obviously the delays weren't long enough. It wasn't actually charring. And also I noticed that it was kind of tugging it forward and it would slide a little too much. So I added a tensioner on the back. And then also, for some reason, I added some KO wool. Just, I had it, you know? In some sort of hope to gain some efficiency. Well, that seemed like it was all working fine and dandy until... Well, um, that's a problem. Bet you've never seen a burning snowball. Jesus. All right, we got a metal caster on there now and we've shortened up the delays. I also replaced that dinky little limit switch with a fridge switch. Uh, don't mind the zip ties. It's epoxied in place. I'm just trying to mitigate some up and down forces while that sets up. Of course, could mitigate those forces by waiting, but that's not really an option, is it? Here we go. Woo that's enough of that it's starting to snowballs i did it for the time lapse guys go 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 that worked pretty damn well i know i'm covered in soot i'm kind of post-processing them now i was able to get the majority of the fence done while those were being burnt so did it save time uh well it will in the long run if i can keep it <laughs> And I'd rather spend time building machine than spend time burning and wire brushing wood. So, might as well save time. Here's some of the boards straight out of the machine. There's still a little bit of post-processing I have to do. I'm going through with this Scotch-Brite and knocking down some of these char marks just to make them a bit smoother like that. And then I'm sealing the whole thing. But other than that, they're basically ready to go. The machine seemed to still be going strong. It did look like towards the end there, our brushes have gotten, they've conformed to the wood a little bit more so they're not brushing as heavily. And a couple of those last ones, I noticed some like brush lines, but those those are coming off with just a scotch bright. I'm still not having to wire brush these things at all. Oh, and the limit switch kind of uh, burnt. So it's more to hold tension on the boards than to tell the Arduino anything. But other than that, I'm pretty pleased with this thing, man. Here, I'll put a picture here of the finished fence with these boards up there. So nice. That's what I got for you this week. If you like what you saw, leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.